is a controller that moves it up. Wow. And you could also tilt it in different directions. This is like a like a guard dog, like it's like in front of you and like you have your gun and you're shooting and this is the shield. You could, or, or it could be for a crowd control situation. Okay. You might not have a lethal weapon. The idea of military technology is scary because it seems like the most brilliant scientific minds are inventing the most creative ways to tear human bodies into little pieces. But the reality of TARDEC, the Army's Tank Automotive Research Development and Engineering Center, is a little more banal. This is fun. These machines are not killer, just killing adjacent. We actually work from these small size robots here all the way up to the, the very large trucks. Developing warbots isn't a new interest for the Army. Their first was built back in the 1950s, a remote-controlled roving platform called Little David, made in response to a German one called Goliath. Troops in this area call it the Doodlebug. Since then, the lab has come up with all sorts of gear and gadgets, though most never make it into the field. But one technology that is expected to be used by troops next fall is called Leader Follower. It's a system in which a manned truck can have any number of driverless trucks follow it in a convoy. About half of the Army's war-related fatalities come from IEDs, and Leader Follower means fewer humans are exposed to them. How does Leader Follower work? So Leader Follower is a combination of a bunch of sensors that are fused together to follow something in front of it. So we have cameras that work like your eyes. We have radar, sends out a radio signal, it bounces back, calculates the time. We have LIDAR, which basically works just like a radar, but sends out a light signal. So all of these things allow us to track and build the world around us. So one vehicle can tell the one behind it, like, okay, I just went over a pothole. It's not so deep, so you can drive over it, or maybe you should go around it, that kind of thing. Correct, but we actually use a cheat. The really hard problem of perceiving the world and knowing where to navigate on it, we're still letting a man in the loop do that. Do you feel like Alfred in Batman? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. Uh, I'd go more for the Iron Man analogy, but... <laughs> Iron Man, okay. <laughs> like most people who work at Tardak, Tyson is a civilian. So two or three times a year, they host soldier innovation workshops where soldiers work with designers to draft new ideas to figure out how to make the next generation of warbots. So I think the number one request we get from soldiers and Marines is, when are we going to get a gun on this? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so everybody wants to be able to put a weapon on the robot to get out to, to be able to fight. We are not building Terminators, slaughter bots. Um, you pick your version. The Army has an explicit rule that humans decide when to kill. That's why the persistent killer robots question annoys Robert Sadowski, the Army's chief roboticist. We are looking at how I remote the lethality. It's not the same thing as making a robot that I'm just going to throw out there all by itself and say, go out, hunt, and destroy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Remoting the lethality, that means making soldiers better at killing the enemy from a greater distance. Yes. And it's not from thousands of miles away. I keep trying to tell folks that maybe half a terrain feature away. I have to maintain positive control of the system. Do you think robots will make it easier to win wars? One would hope so. Again, I want us to be the ones who make it easier to win the war. Do you ever like lie awake at night and think, like, what if I'm making terrible machines of death? Uh, a tank itself is a terrible machine of death. I don't look at it that way. I'm not like naive enough to say, oh yeah, I'm building killer robots and I'm not worried about the potential implications. I'm very worried about making sure that we build systems in such a way that we understand what they do, we understand how they can team with soldiers and how they can provide them an advantage. Does making these kinds of missions less lethal for the American side mean politicians are more likely to want to engage in so warfare? So remember, this is a hybrid formation. I keep trying to tell folks, there are people there. <laughs> Sadowski's point is that we're a long way from the fully autonomous, Energizer Bunny-esque robot dogs in Black Mirror. Not necessarily because it's creepy or unethical, but because we don't have the battery technology to power it. And they're not smart enough to operate without humans. Oh, okay, so like if I was tied up shooting at bad guys, yeah. he could you take over. For now, war robots will do yeah, more mundane actually, tasks. Like, follow a truck while carrying a lot of stuff over a smooth terrain with few trees. You could hand over your 
vehicle into a robotic mode, and now your commander can be controlling it. So you could either do training or maybe return fire on an enemy. Okay. Or you could like check Instagram. Or check Instagram. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, the world ended. <laughs>